that uh, you got to have you have to take care of your application reliability and resiliency, not the cloud providers. Now, when it comes down to your e-commerce, customer experience is very, very key. That's your brand. So in order to have that customer experience, you have to run your application, your e-commerce service a lot more reliably compared to you might have done you know, on the data center. You know, the, the performance has to be much better than what it used to be because you know, when you go to amazon.com, that sets a standard now for e-commerce applications. So got to have the reliability demanded uh, by your customers to have customer experience that they desire. On the other hand, you have to be compliant with your organization policies as well. Right? You have to have a disaster recovery as one of the complaints, and you have to have security complaints. You know, many complaints aside, you uh, from a disaster recovery point of view, you can become compliant with the right set of management technologies around. But when you do all of that as a site reliability engineer or cloud ops engineer, you know, the site reliability engineering is becoming more and more common nowadays, uh, especially when uh, the cloud operations people really look at uh, the entire cloud infrastructure from an application-centric perspective, right? And you can codify them. Now, when you put all these the backends properly, now, now it's possible to release newer and newer features quick. Right? And now you can roll out your applications globally in other markets. So it's about increasing the revenue. So it's about reducing the risk, becoming compliant, and then increase your revenue as well. And that's what happened with one of our customers. So one of our customers, uh, Pragya Systems, you know, they, that's a 24-7 um, uh, an application that operates for higher end uh, education students and universities. They wanted global scalability for all the universities and thousands and thousands of students sign in and check and they operate on top of a, a, a cloud platform today. High availability is one of the crucial, crucial requirements. And Apranix makes it easier, much easier for them. So we ask very simple questions when you kind of start this conversation with a potential customer. When did you really test your application and service resiliency? I think about it. You, you know, you struggle hard to kind of uh, take your applications that have been running on the data center, you know, somehow lifted and shifted and, um, you know, classified your applications in terms of waves, you know, you kind of moved them over to the, uh, to the newer, fancier cloud platforms. Now what happens? You are kind of putting together the infrastructure necessary to manage those applications, but have you really tested? Have you really kind of experimented with that service resiliency, right? And if you try to kind of take the existing scenarios, existing mechanism processes, and the tool sets that are available in the data center, which are pretty much, you know, VM backup and recovery solutions, those are grossly insufficient for always on applications. So if you think about it, you know, the traditional problems of disasters, they are not decreasing anytime soon. They are going to affect whatever the regions of the cloud or the zones even uh, within the cloud provider. And there are other requirements with respect to disaster recovery, not necessarily just within the cloud provider. Now in the future, you know, do you have contactual resiliency for applications? Even if a single cloud provider goes off, fine, then you know, can you bring up your application in another cloud? Second thing is the ransomware attacks. These ransomware attacks, it's not about just demanding the ransomware or paying for the ransomware. It's about recovering from that failure. For example, Atlanta spent $2.6 million, it's all public knowledge, you could go and search, for a meager 52K ransom because of the ransomware attack. FedEx went through huge problems because of uh, NotPetya attack uh, some uh, last year actually. And you know, you can, you can see many, many attacks and they are increasing day after day. So you have to protect you. It's about uh, the, the downtime that you might end up having because of these attacks. Now, 
great. So, you know, you could uh, come up with a, with a high availability approach for your applications. Um, you know, AWS, for example, recommends if you took e-commerce applications like Magento, put a uh, load balancer, and perhaps you will have to go with one of their RDS, uh, the hosted uh, database services. Uh, but still, you know, that's within a particular region. You have to do their architecture properly, but most of the time what happens is you don't have it. So if you think about a good um, e-commerce application, let's pick Magento, uh, that will be the demonstration point uh, for us from an e-commerce recovery perspective. So if you look at Magento Enterprise, uh, with respect to really kind of this, this particular one, uh, came from Rackspace. They have been hosting about 1,000 um, customer websites as of back in 2015. So I'm sure there are, uh, you know, multiple thousands now. Uh, if you think about, um, you know, taking uh, 5,000 users, uh, you know, per, per hour in terms of handling the backend, you have to have a highly uh, scalable system as well as uh, capability to kind of uh, protect in, in case of uh, any downtime and so on. So the architecture itself is very complex. So it is not about your your servers and your databases, your um, other configurations. It's about the entire system working, right? So when one of these attacks happen or disaster happens, what happens to your entire system? You got to be able to bring back that entire system. So that's very, very key. Fourth is that you know, misconfigurations, uh, human error. This is very, very typical. You know, every time you make an update to the infrastructure, uh, there's a potential possibility that you might bring down the application, even with a simple configuration change, right? Uh, even a simple automatic update of, of an application, uh, con a component of an application, for example, right? So platform misconfigurations uh, cause bigger problems and they might take down your entire site availability even though you might say the backend is working fine and then now you'll have to go back and figure out what's going on it might take hours what if we had a facility with a click of a button you could bring back the entire site and you borrow time at least you borrow time and fix the problem properly so that is another big problem with respect to uh, the resiliency so having considered all this what if we offered a solution it's unique in the market, unique site reliability automation solution for application resiliency on a cloud native environment. Now we offer the peace of mind in terms of, you know, taking care of the policies required for you to uh, protect and recover completely for a disaster recovery. Reliability confidence, so, you know, perform frequent non-disruptive without disturbing your production environment so that you can become predictable. I know this is kind of repeating uh, so many times based on you know whatever you might have heard from so many other vendors before in terms of, hey, repeat your discoveries, but it never happened. Because most of the time what happens is that you might outsource and I think this is too much to do. And even if you outsource it, the, you know, the compliance wise, they might run it, they may not. So what's the guarantee, right? So you got to be able to at least demand, uh, you know, test frequently. That's all great, but you know, what if it takes two weeks to bring all the systems up because you've got to have, you know, let's say if you outsource one of your uh, resiliency services to a third party, now you'll have to have the same configurations on your private um, environment um, and you have to be compatible with uh, the environment that needs to be recovered. So simple things like VMware vCenter differences, you know, uh, the resiliency services um, company might be running uh, 6.0 or 5.5 of vCenter. You might be running the latest and greatest. So that goes to compatibility. What is the guarantee that the applications will be recovered? What's the network configuration on the other side? Right? You might be running uh, your Cisco networks. On the other hand, you know the resiliency service providers will have to run at a lower cost, so they might go with something else. Your load balances. Your gateways, what about your port group configurations, your security groups? So the disaster recovery was always, or has always been so far, it's a dream. But the cloud actually simplifies it. Cloud actually offers a way to do it. 
Now, Pranix actually makes it extremely simple. So you can achieve lowest cost for achieving whatever the resiliency that you wanted. So it's not about disaster recovery. That's, that belongs to you know uh, recovering virtual machines, recovering data disks, recovering your databases and so on. This is about application resiliency. So we can offer that. If you think about current solutions in the market, currently you know um, uh, some of the customers who reached out to us, uh, they searched across the market, they couldn't find one, and that's why uh, we have created uh, such a solution for. Uh, large companies, you know, I cannot unfortunately name those companies because we do not have permission to um, use them yet. Uh, we are working with their uh, legal services, but it's one of the largest even management company that makes about $10 billion. You might use them for purchasing tickets and so on. It's one of the huge customer for us. Now, if you think about it, cloud zone, a region where you run your applications, right? Multiple services that belong to a particular e-commerce system. And then you might run all kinds of cloud infrastructure, right? Not just not compute your internet gateways, the routing configurations, VPCs, VPN gateways, your snapshots. You got to be able to take the snapshots in a periodic manner. Your route table configuration, elastic load balancers, your DNS configurations, and you might, on the way, encrypt your data uh, in the back end because it makes sense to encrypt given all the cyber attacks. Right? With all these, we call them as cloud assemblies. Uh, VMware calls them as cloud assemblies. So you create and manage the cloud assembly for your application. And what happens when you try to kind of fail over, even if you try to achieve a partial failover, you got to do a ton of automation. You have to manage snapshot lifecycle completely yourself. And you might end up putting some third party backup products, even though cloud services offer some of the backup capabilities. And you know you, you may have to you know you may not have the skills as necessary and a timeless uh, availability perspective. So you'll end up um, recruiting expensive consultants. That's totally fine because they have they might have the capability to put together. But you know I haven't seen uh, so far you know beyond the production uh, infrastructure as code. Um, uh, you know if they can ever write it. Uh, so it's 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 a problem of skill set, but that might be uh, you know plugged later on. At the end of the day, you end up getting no guarantees. There's no guarantee that your e-commerce application will come up or not, right? And, and you end up getting an automation system nightmare. You may not be able to even version your infrastructure as code properly, right, on your cloud platforms for your application. So we offer a way to implement a cloud-native application-centric DR without disturbing production environment. Think about the situation where you are running your applications, right, and um, your production environment is running. You know your your complete is coming on you, your e-commerce um, application, the back end, uh, the compute is scaling automatically. Uh, your configurations are changing. Uh, you are introducing newer, newer security groups depending on where you are. So your production environment continues to be very, very dynamic and you know changing because you are deploying newer configurations, newer, newer application changes. Everything is changing. So we don't have to disturb it, right? You don't want to be disturbing that particular uh, you know running environment. But what if it goes down? And it goes down. Now you should be able to seamlessly fail over to another region where should be able to automatically create the entire cloud assembly, which means that you know, where is the code for creating such thing? So that's fine. So you, let's say if you created your cloud formation template somehow and you kept that up to date all the time, you could launch these new services. But the problem is that where are the configurations? Right? Where are the cloud service configurations? Where is your compute size that you wanted on, the, on, on one of the regions? You know, you might have updated your latest compute size. Simple, as simple as that. What happened to your disk changes, number of um, EBS volumes that you attached on the left-hand side? Great. Now you have to have similar number. And what about the configurations of DNS? What about the configurations of load balancer? So infrastructure as code simplifies it compared to your data center way to operate it. But what happens to your data? You don't have it. 
now you have to work on the life cycle management of the data itself with the click of a button we can bring up all of that so once it is done you can test it you can get rid of that existing infrastructure you can put back to your cloud region as if nothing happened hopefully because you know there may be changes with respect to your data and so on but at least you have the entire application environment running properly or you could at least borrow time your customer experience improves right so you know compared to competition um there is i'm sure people will catch up you can be compliant you can reduce your risk and confidently expand your applications globally so given that again we are a site reliability automation company uh we can significantly increase your application reliability and we are a saas platform it runs 99.9% with 99.9% sla 24/7 support you can dial in one of the you can you can ask one of our customers you know we had a good conversation yesterday uh, they are back up and running yes of yesterday night and so the similar situations happen with customers all the time and we have been recognized by leading analysts and we are having a lot of conversations with forester gartner and esg as well in terms of reports so that's all great a planning team how do i get started is it too complex i know having experienced the previous and dr solutions now i have to really kind of configure it is a longer conversation it's a, almost like a project for three months right nothing like that all you have to do is to go to aws marketplace assuming that aws is the solution of choice and click to subscribe and we have tightly integrated this entire solution with aws continue to subscribe assuming that you already have the account everything is properly running for your production environment and the pricing is very very transparent you know 35 cents per vm per month even though we um, charge per vm because that's an e- easy unit uh, to talk about but and i will show you how other components of the application gets affected so this is how you start and once you subscribe and uh, automatically create an account on our saas you can get started very very simply and you have end user license agreement please check it out make sure that you are okay with it and you can get started so um i don't have to do it because i am already a customer of you know apranix and once you log in right uh, it's very simple in terms of getting started you know you will not see all the services on the left hand side you will see only the protect service all you have to do is to configure your cloud environment a little bit so you give a name right and you give the access keys you know you could create your own specific access key for apranix that's what other customers have done and you have the required iam policy right here you can simply cut and paste that uh, iam policy in your policy document as simple as that uh, to get started and once you're done with it um, you know you can uh, enable services necessary and the other services are automatically covered but if you wanted in a classic versus network you know we have to choose the right one for you and you can choose them appropriately in this particular case um i have already kind of uh, um discovered them so once you configure your uh, primary region we automatically go and discover everything right and in this particular case we are going to talk about magenta magenta has a back end mysql and the other one of the other magenta configurations and on the ec2 you'll see uh we are running on northern virginia um and we have the magenta application running and this particular uh, if you had this couple of them Listen, i didn't want to complicate things because you know if you put a, a bigger architecture then it takes time to kind of recover and show the demo here and you can see you know all the volumes uh, the, the backend configure for magento mysql all the snapshots that w- are completely automated by us uh security cook configurations load balancers and so on. so all of the services that you configure uh using uh you know scripts or you know ias infrastructure code i call them we call them as iasc 
and you know configure your dns entries as well so you have uh, your zones that are configured using um, route 53 and then you have magento and the, the back end uh, databases that are configured as well so all of this make up your production environment right so once you uh, run this environment uh, and uh, you discover them we automatically discover them call them as a dr environment so you can group them create them something called an assembly cloud assembly as i explained before and you can see we not only discover just the compute even though we show the compute because it's a unit of discussion unit of uh, kind of assembling uh, the services for your application becomes easier that's why we show only the compute but at the back end we collect all these uh, cloud services automatically you don't have to do anything it's just click and go in under an hour you should be able to make sure that uh, assuming that you know you configure the snapshot within an hour you know you can do your first disaster recovery test within the hour just imagine that you now three months of a project versus you can test it in under an hour that's huge right and we can run a 14 day free trial for you to make sure that you are comfortable to make it happen right if you look at the configurations wise uh you you know you have to if you want us to deal with your dns you know it's complicated enough that we completely automate that and then you can configure the zones and you can see the zones are automatically configured you know we automatically test if they, if they are going great or not so this is the application that's running here so this is your Magento application that is running here. And, um, you know, I let me log in to show um, kind of a couple of uh, things that I already bought. Uh, you know, you can uh, look at all the uh, typical Magento application, nothing, um, you know, fancy here. And I have a um, couple of items uh, on my shopping cart. Uh, so in my shopping cart, you can see the peers, you know, whatever that is, you know, you have, uh, the shopping cart that is already working now what uh, we are going to do you know assuming that you have already configured the system you can protect the system with a, the backup we call it as a backup basically it's it's taking care of your snapshot life cycle in the back end so you simply you know you can create any number of protection policies if you don't like how hourly daily weekly just like any other backup way of creating the policies that's kind of very familiar so we use the familiar mechanism but we automatically manage and orchestrate the replication for your systems in the back end so you can keep the 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 snapshots you know retain snapshots um, whatever the number of snapshots that you want to keep that gives you uh, the entire timeline so it automatically creates a timeline right you can go back in time and recover whatever those so these are all based on the number of snapshots that are kind of retained so here uh, I can see whenever you change the configurations, we'll capture that automatically. So you don't have to worry about changing configurations in the production. You don't have to go back and resync your DR. Those days are gone, right? You can simply let the system handle it automatically. And from an application center perspective, because your cloud assembly represents your application, right? So that's it. This is the configuration that you want. And you can see the protection logs. So you're being protected all the time. If there are problems, you'll, you'll get notifications. You'll see success or failure here. So everything else is handled. Now what we are going to do, we are going to simulate uh, a disaster. So what we are going to do, as you can see, this one is already working. So we are going to take down this, this completely. Right? Two systems that are running stop the systems right so th those will be out of commission and you can see here uh let's see if uh, it's already done you know it's not connecting uh let's see if we can browse to something else just to make sure that system is not responding um and you know your customer experience is going to go bad in a moment uh, depending on how it uh, responds uh, the browser response wise so um already you're spinning right you know it's, it's the system is down and 
Uh, I can see, um, you know, this in the back end, uh, it's being taken down, it's stopping. So, you know, you might see some activity here, um, but it's trying. Your system is completely, completely kind of going bad. Um, let's make sure that we get that screen that says that you cannot reach it, right? Uh, this is why I kind of avoid, you know, creating bigger systems because I want to keep it simple to demonstrate, you know, why the system is not working at all. So you can see, now go to maybe another here, um, you know, the system will not come up, right? Let's, let's make sure that the systems are down. So that's completely stopped. Database is out. Um, you know, the, the HTTP connection here might be kind of pinging. Um, Again, okay, now it's completely down. This is what I call as a bad customer experience. It's completely down. Now, what are we going to do? You know, now you are kind of in a firefight mode, and uh, I am in a pickle. I have to at least uh, bring the system back. So, what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit a single button here. Single button to recover my whatever that was protected. Right? I I am trying to at least borrow some time until I can fix the problem uh, in the production environment. That is one of the use cases. Other use cases is completely down for whatever reason, disaster, ransomware attack, but now I can do that. It's like, with a click of a button, I am doing some magic, right? So I am bringing up the entire environment in the Oregon region. In the Oregon region, that was one of the pre-configurations that we did before. As you can see, there is nothing here except uh, some snapshots that are coming in that I configured before based on you know my policies that are kept in a kind of a warm state because you've got to have your data you know moving data in large quantities across uh, the country is not easy so let AWS handle that that's the beauty of AWS right and in the previous generation of data center infrastructure is just impossible to achieve uh, without you know creating complex architectures None of the security groups, none of, none of is there. So now uh, there are no systems running. Uh, the security groups, you know, we kind of use it for other purposes on the other region, but only the snapshots are here. Nothing else is available. So what's happening here is that uh, our service is operating. It's creating, it's doing all the work for you. Think about that, you know, creating all of this, right? all the VPC configurations, all the DHCP configurations, all the subnets, all the route tables, right? All of that subnets, uh, gateways, um, and a particular target group within a load balancer, and making sure that your security groups are properly set up. You know, even if you had the security groups that are changing and uh, what happens to your tags, even, you know, you might have the tags for the security group for, because you might be, relying on those DAGs for other management operations. Even, you know, search and find them based on the tags. So tagging is one of the good ways to manage very dynamic, uh, large application environments on the cloud platform. So you have to have same tags completely replicated as well. All the configurations and the entire thing has to be recreated, right? And the instances are coming up. Uh, we have only a couple of instances. Shouldn't be, shouldn't take too much time to, to to make them available. So here, if you look at the Oregon region here, uh, let's do a refresh of this environment. Uh, go to the environment. As you can see now, uh, Magento, Magento two are coming up. You can see here, um, uh, this is the new IP um, that's. Uh, being kind of uh, automatically created here for that, that we are creating based on the, the requirement from the uh, production environment. And uh, let's see if uh, it's still in progress, it's, it's creating. So we, we are pretty much recreating everything that you have in the production environment. Right? So we have to give a little bit of time uh, for the systems to come up, even the smaller ones uh, will take a little bit of time, but the good thing about cloud is that you can spin up, you know, uh, hundreds of them at the same time. So, and you don't have to do any of that. Panix automatically takes care of all of that, right? And making sure that your snapshots are properly configured with those systems as well. Your security groups are uh, configured with those systems as well. If you had 
classic load balancer versus network load balancer, those are automatically configured uh, as well uh, uh, with Uplanix. All the tags will be recreated, um, so you don't have to worry about them. And the three running systems are ready to go. I think uh, they are running. And once they are running, you can see the recovery was successful. Right. So now what we are going to do is still our Magenta, uh, Magento, I'm sorry, is not accessible. Right. That's because your DNS is not enabled. So what we are going to do is another button click because since it is a DNS change, we request you to review and then say, yes, go ahead and change it. Right. So once you did that, this automatically updates the DNS. You can see here, uh, let's refresh it. It used to be the primary um, region's IPs. And let's search for Magento. You can see those are changed to the recovery region ones automatically. You don't have to do anything, right? Uh, but with any uh, DNS change, uh, if you have dealt with the DNS, uh, there's always a cache that you will have to wait until that uh, effect um, uh, changes uh, take effect. And here the process is, is done. You know, you don't have to do anything. This is all, you know, this system uh, is running somewhere else. It's ri actually running on Google. And we are using uh, some of the services from AWS and some of the services from Azure as well. So we are um, you know, multi-cloud and our own system manages our own service. So we eat our own dog food, if you will. And uh, your system should be uh, capable of going out and recovering. So you, you know, even if you lose AWS account, for example, that particular account where your e-commerce application, your Magenta application was running, you can still reach Apranix and be able to recover. That's one of the beauties of a SaaS-based system that's always available and 99.9% .9 availability. Now, sorry. Uh, so assuming that uh, this is done, the recovery is complete. So DNS change might have happened as well. And let's see if the system comes up again. Um, usually what happens is uh, uh, it takes a bit of time to, to make sure that the cache is clear, but you can see the perfect now it came back, right? I can log in. Um, here, Abdul. And perfect. Now, as you can see, all your data, um, your shopping cart is uh, as it was an hour ago or something like that based on your protection policies. Those are completely kind of up and running as well. Now you borrow time from the disaster, from the misconfigurations, from a ransomware attack, any of that. And you didn't have to accept, you know, setting up one time and clicking two buttons, you were able to bring up the entire application up in another region. So this region has all the uh, latest configurations as is, right? Because you pretty much replicated all of that using a Pranix, making sure that all the configurations are back in line. Now, so this is great. So what I'm supposed to do now, you know, I should be able to, you know, I, all right, now you're doing just, let's assume that you are doing a testing. So you could simply go back and reset, right? Uh, make sure that you reset the DNS right, assuming that your production came back, uh, reset the DNS. And once you reset the DNS, as you can see that your thing um, will go back to the previous one. We wish we set up the elastic IPs as well. That way it is very simple to kind of make the changes. And once it is set, you will have the connection here. So the connection is lost. Your application has gone down. Now you are going to clean up the entire environment. You could simply say clean up because you know we ask you to type uh, the reset because we understand that you know you you know you might just uh, click a button and then go. Uh, we want to protect you from doing that, so we ask you to uh, you know make sure that uh, you are clear on what you are doing and reset the button. Click the reset button. You reset the entire environment. It's going to work backwards in terms of cleaning up the entire. Oregon region 
of all the changes that we did, right? So you can go back and check uh, those running instances, security group snapshots, all of that uh, will be appropriately cleaned up. Uh, so you can see uh, those are gone and the other things will be automatically cleaned up and you can go back to, uh, you know, restarting the service in the other region, right? Um, making sure that your application comes up again. Okay. So let me stop here. Uh, again, re-emphasizing uh, the point of, all right, um, you become compliant. You reduce your risk and you can roll out bigger changes faster. And that's what we offer from a Pranix perspective. Let me stop here and see if there are questions. Any questions so far? You can raise your hand, I will come to know. Um, and yes, okay, so that's, uh, that was my bad that I didn't uh, show my screen before. So, um, right. all right, uh, if there are no questions, no problem, you can always reach us. Um, you know, I, I am reachable at the govind.apranix.com and you can reach us, uh, any of us at any point in time, uh, asking for more information about our capabilities. Uh, and um, as I said earlier, uh, the entire webinar has been recorded, will be available on YouTube, so you can go back and refer and pass on to other team members within the company or other interested parties within your social network. So. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much.